There was anger on the steps of New York City Hall, parents demanding schools reopen for in-person learning. The shutdown sent parents of some 300,000 students scrambling Wednesday night. Dr. Uche Blackstock has treated thousands of COVID patients and has two boys in New York City public schools. Is it safe to send students back to school in New York City? I do think right now it is safe. They're going back in smaller cohorts. They're wearing masks, as are the teachers. In Florida, schools will remain open despite concerns from teachers. The state's governor not mincing words. People who advocate closing schools for virus mitigation uh, are effectively today's flat earthers. You know, it's a horrible decision when even the mainstream media turns its back on Democratic lawmakers. Joining me now, director of MRC TV, Eric Shiner. Eric, thanks for joining me. Eric, uh, usually the mainstream media sides with their friends, their Democratic lawmaker friends. Uh, this time, it looks like they are uh, not happy with the idea of shutting down schools again, but they've, again, been kind of all over the place on this. First, they were against it, then they're for it, then they're against it, they're for it. Uh, but we've been just kind of all over the map on this, and really, there's no clear direction for the schools, the teachers, or the parents. But there is a clear direction for the media, and it is if you're a media organization and you're based out of New York and your school, it's New York City and your schools close, well, then you use terms like, you know, uh, outrage and scrambling and parents are upset because this impacts your life, this impacts your kids. But, you know, when they cover the, uh, you know, uh, keeping schools open in Florida, uh, well, that's a Republican governor, so that's bad. And it's against what the teachers union want. And the teachers union has concerns about safety and health. And these things are being ignored by that darn Republican. Uh, you know, that's the tactic that they have. So, you know, if it impacts them, it's a bad thing. Yeah, you wonder a lot of these <laughs> TV hosts who have kids at home or their grandkids who are impacted by this, as you pointed out. And uh, I'm not a parent, but I have friends who are parents, and they talk about how difficult it is to do, like, this Zoom online learning and what the challenges are for them, especially in the middle of a pandemic when they have to worry about their businesses or trying to get back to work. Uh, it really gives parents very limited options, if you will. And as you pointed out, the media, they after the red state lawmakers for uh, keeping schools open. Then they find like the one teacher who's really upset with the idea of having to go back to work because they're afraid they're going to catch COVID. But, you know, the same teacher will go to the nail salon or go to Target or uh, Walmart <laughs> or, or hit up the liquor store, right? Right. Well, those those places, you know, are safe as long as they keep the limited numbers and, you know, you go before 10 o'clock when the virus shuts down. Um, you have you have to go before that time happens. No, absolutely. They're, they are very biased in the way they're covering it. Again, you know, here in New York City, where a lot of these news anchors live and where a lot of the hubs of these networks are, it's a bad thing when the schools uh, close down. But in Florida, if they keep the schools open, well, they have a Republican governor, so that's really a bad choice, and they don't care about teachers. Yeah. Now, I want to shift gears here. Uh, apparently, some of the media are really looking forward to uh, a Biden presidency and, uh, and what Biden's relationship with the media will look like, and we have an example of it. Roll tape. I think that um, it points to a return, quite frankly, to um, a, a move to a more traditional relationship with the press. I mean, Trump was very effective in um, damaging the reputation of reporters and constantly attacking reporters because he wanted his uh, word to be final. He wanted his supporters to believe only what he said and not what they saw in the news. And, and you know, he really eroded the First Amendment. Real question here, did he damage the reputation of these reporters or did they damage it themselves? Because based on what I've seen, uh, President Trump was just kind of like showing it as it is. Exactly. He was calling the media out uh, for attacking him, and they went after him aggressively, unlike anything we've ever seen before. And as you know, here at the Media Research Center, we have plenty of numbers in studies showing that. But the interesting thing is, I love how they're like, well, this will make things traditional, a traditional relationship again. Do we not remember what the Obama-Biden administration did? They they pulled hundreds of phone records on AP reporters. Uh, they had a reporter that uh, they didn't like his reporting, so they had him listed as a co-conspirator under the Espionage Act. They took another reporter to court for seven years trying to get him to reveal who his sources are. Uh, they have the worst record on Freedom of Information Act uh, of responding to the Freedom of Information Act request than any other in, uh, administration in history. That's what we're returning to, and that's great for reporters. That's a really interesting perspective.